Graffiti Build of the Worlds. This is a Burroughs and Budgers Benfield build. Back to the alliteration and back out on the swamp uh, in the brilliant world of Burroughs and Badgers. Um, I wanted to do this for a few weeks now, two or three months actually, um, ever since I converted this guy. Oh, I wasted time doing that. Look at these two. Check out these pictures. Here he is. He's a converted beaver. Um, he started off looking like this and then. Um, Ended up going the way I wanted it. I wanted a rough and ready looking priest who was kind of like part of the community in, in my village on the marsh out near the North Sea. Uh, and he is a, a priest of the uh, sea god Manan. Now having, well, Manananan, Manananananan, Manananan, or oh, whatever. Uh, the sea god. <laughs> and uh, having built him, uh, it naturally led to the fact that uh, he needed his own place. I've done the old model for BNB recently. You've seen the ship model. I'm making some more ships. Uh, and of course, I've also done cheating and used that 3D printed alchemist house. Made an item for that. But I want a model specific to this character. That's what I like about this kind of game. You paint one model, you make one creature, one new character, one creation. And that spawns a whole bunch of other ideas. Um, which is great. Uh, it's time consuming. It's a pain in the neck because, yeah, there's another model I want to make. But that, I think, is always a sign of a really good game. And Burrows and Badgers. As we've already discussed, is a really good game. If you're not aware of Burrows and Badgers, then um, I'm surprised because most people who watch my channel are. Burrows and Badgers is an anthropomorphic tabletop skirmish game written by Michael Lovejoy of those four miniatures, and he makes a huge, fantastic range of figures as well. Um, and it's been my top game, certainly for the last three years, got me through the pandemic and everything. Um, it's hugely adaptable. Uh, the group of guys I, I play regularly with, we've been playing throughout 2022, most of which uh, our campaign has been set in the city of London. You may even have seen our Facebook page, The War Bands of London. Um, but now I want to kind of restart and regenerate the whole game of the campaign by moving it to uh, Benfield and the rivers of Albion. Uh, and um, so I keep building scenery for that. So this will work really well. I've got temples made for on land in the middle of the city. Uh, but this is going to be a sea-based temple. And because it's a beaver, uh, who is the priest, I'm going to base it around a dam. Um, although I have no idea what it's going to look like at the moment. But, uh, yeah, stick with me. Hang in there. Let's see how this goes. Um, this is going to be an interesting build. It's going to be done mostly with um, low-density polystyrene, I think. Or, I think, or maybe XPS uh, foam, 50mm thick. Uh, lots of actual wood um, and uh, we'll see how we go. We're going to make the dam um, with a lift off top so that it, that's deep enough to be the home of the priest and then there needs to be a temple on the top of that. Open to the elements I think because you know it's it's a water based sea based religion so we'll, um, we'll see how that all works out. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with a piece of hardboard that I'm going to cut out to make uh, the actual building on. I want to make it so that the um, dam itself has got uh, two or three possible joining pieces so they look a bit like jetties but that way there I can have kind of walkways from different parts of the village join up to it and butt up to it easily or they could be um, jetties that boats could come alongside. So that's the first part. The first part then is to make the kind of island the temple is going to be on, uh, build the dam and then worry about what the temple on the top is going to look like uh, later on, maybe in another video, who knows? Um, what do we need to do first? Well, no, first of all, um, because this is all on here uh, pirate ship and alchemist island, I need to clear this up, clean down, and um, crack on with another model. Oh, look, there's a pit fighting uh, pit over there as well. Yeah, hmm, it's always busy around here. Still, BB models, wicked. <laughs> okay, so here is my piece of hardboard that I'm going to be using. I'm not going to use it all necessarily, I'm going to chop a bit off. You can see it's mostly covered in, quite a lot of covered in, uh, black dog hair. That's Ahsoka. Thank you for that, Ahsoka. But that's mainly because to keep my hardboard flat, I tend to keep it on the floor of the workshop. Because it's just, if you lean it up against something, if you put it on shelves, it just warps and bends. This way it stays nice and flat most of the time. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is clear off all the hair. Then I'm going to work out how big the damn model's going to be. Hmm. Back in a sec. Right. Sorry, everybody. Right, okay, so now you can see uh, what I've done. I've, I've drawn on here. Um, this board is... My well, red bit is... Uh, what's that? 12... Uh, 
about 16 inches across and then less than 12 inches this way and what I'm thinking is having an island uh, which essentially this bit is the islandy bit and then I go three bits on one each side here where I'm going to build those kind of jetties that I was talking about where I can have things join on which means then uh, underneath probably a large chunk of this here thing will be beaver home like that quite a large space you can see the, the problem with the beaver is he's a massive beast in burrows and badgers which means he's got 50 millimeter base so they have to be pretty bloody big and it's going to be quite tall as well because this model actually stands uh 70 millimeters nearly 80 millimeters tall because of the the stance he's in so it's going to have to be quite a thick heavy dam i don't know how i'm going to make that work this idea might not work from a being able to put figures in keeping them inside point of view but it might work from uh, taking the lid off and put figures inside and that kind of thing um, so we'll have to see how it goes we have to build up the island first of all but it doesn't matter if it's not like a natural island like the others because it's a dam it's been made by a beaver uh, piled up loads and loads of wood so um, we'll see how we go so I'm going to cut this shape out with these jetty bits on um, aiming to then make get my uh, polystyrene this thick and put that on there and see where we are. Might even leave a little bit of a lip around here so I've got more water. Gonna do that in a different pen. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Give that a go, see what happens. Alright, so it turns out the lighting is shocking in here during the day. Sorry about that. Anyway, look, this is the basic shape. Um, and I've got three bits where I'm gonna plan to stick jetties, one on either side, one here, and then this is the main part is gonna be polystyrene. Um this is going to be one of my biggest pieces of scenery for Burrows and Badgers, but uh, I think it'll be kind of cool. It will link up, they'll be it'll make a nice centerpiece, I think, uh, for a table with jetties going off in different directions and bits and pieces. It'll be pretty cool. Uh, so, from that point of view, yeah, kind of neat. Uh, next job then is to find some polystyrene, roughly the shape, it's roughly rectangular, uh, going on there, that I'm going to be able to actually make the um, main. Uh, a dam out of and then I'll have to cut into the middle of it to make the um, priest's court so um, that's the next bit let's go find some 20 thirds and 50 mil low density polystyrene all right here's some low density polystyrene uh, block off and I'm gonna get a heat wand and cut out these bits so they'll match roughly the shape and then I'm gonna work out on this how it's gonna work on there with Shop, shop, shoppies. Let's cut out this first bit first of all. Send that. No, no point cutting out the first bit. That's too much cutting. Um, this is the bit that I put on there. Oh no, I'm going to cut it out first of all. Right, what the hell? Let's do that. As you can see, he's a complete pro at this and he kind of knows exactly what he's doing right from the get go. There's uh, always a plan and uh, he never changes his mind at any point. For those of you watching for the first time, you can see this guy is a slick professional model maker and he never changes his mind. He's always got a plan. He knows exactly how it's going to work out. That's exactly how all videos on YouTube go. You just get a guy, you go, this is what we're going to do and bam, next job, there it is done. Or really, in my case, I kind of like make my mind up and bumble along as I go, changing my mind a number of times during the video. Makes it more interesting that way. So, sod it, cut it out first. That's what we're going to do. Yes, we are. Right, so that's the rough bit cut out first of all. Um, now, actually, what I want to do is make sure, first of all, I've got some uh, water, water space. Uh, so that's gonna he's gonna come around there a bit a bit more of an angle I think and uh, that of course is where I'm gonna have a jetty so I can force cut that and lose that come around this side and I want to trim down the back there and a jetty at the front but I've left that space already so I'm just gonna trim that more you can see that there nice big space there. Uh, going over there, look at the smoke burning off that. Getting that. And then around this side over here. Again, make sure I've got enough room for jetty and water effects around the outside. So.
kind of thing. Okay, so now we can see that. So now I'm going to go back in with my heat wand. See it is smoking away. And um, a cut more. So we need to get down to more to the kind of size we want. Not very precise tools these, but they're right. What it has done is it's gone right through the polystyrene. I can feel the board underneath. It's kind of neat. And this way, I will get water around the base of the model. Now I'm pretty sure there are some people who are watching this wondering why I'm not doing this in XPS foam rather than um, using this low density polystyrene and the, the simple answer is actually well, two answers. First of all it's about using the best material for the job uh, uh, what in this case what's most cost effective and second is what I've got lying around. Um, I've got 50 millimeter XPS foam and the garage, but this is going to be clad. I'm not using the. The reason to use XPS foam otherwise is because it's a really good solid building material, and you can scribe into it and that kind of thing. Well, I'm not doing that with this. I'm building a beaver's dam. So actually, what's going to happen is this is going to have logs all the way around the outside. In fact, I need to trim a little bit more off because. Uh, there won't be the room to add the kind of luggage, so the the foam is just bulking out the model. So I don't need it to be high density at all. I'm not painting onto it um, in its own right. So yeah, it's much better off if I use this much cheaper, easier, easy to work with material. And using a heat tool like this, it's not messy either. So from that point of view, this stuff is only really messy if you start cutting into it and tearing it and stuff. But I do need to trim it down more because my plan is to completely surround the outside of this model in piles of wood so it looks like it's a dam being made by a beaver so uh, trim a bit more off in fact okay here we go I'll do this now on the model so I can see what I'm doing of course cutting this out like this <laughs> I'm also sitting there thinking, if I do ever actually get around to making those hobbit holes, the process is going to be very similar, uh, frankly, because, you know, bulky got to be above ground, that is if I don't make a whole shire board, but hey, other people have done that on the sites of their tube channels already, so what the hell. Right, okay, so I think, I think I've now made enough um, for the island, now I need to work out what's going to be um, underneath the temple uh, and then we need to stick all this down and get on with the actual um, cladding I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, the actual temple an interesting kind of shape in flower like that. more organic than a regular house you know there we go kind of that room inside there's enough room there from the venture point of view and uh, maybe a little bit bigger at this end to work out how the hell I'm going to cover that over. Probably just with. I don't know. But that'll give me space inside to do some cool stuff as well. So let's cut that out. And then. Oh, the atmospheric smoke for something. Then it's going to be just going to be a case of stick this bad boy down to the base. That, of course gonna have to take best part of 24 hours to drive certainly overnight I'm gonna use gorilla wood glue for that okay here we go then uh, glue we're using gorilla wood glue well, we can if we get any other bloody bottle come on 
bottle sealed up, which is always the case with this stuff. Very good glue. God damn motherfucker. Fuck it, you fuck fucks. Okay, in the bright sun, afternoon sunshine, we're gonna use Gorilla Wood glue. All over the base, all over this. Smear it on. Uh, we're gonna let it we're gonna spread it out and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it go off for a few minutes. Uh, that way there it gets a, a bit of adhesion. And um, then we're gonna put some heavy weights on it. Let's do that so you can hear me. And we're gonna put some heavy weights on it and leave it overnight. Uh, normally I'd glue the uh, bits gluing to as well, but frankly I don't think they need to really to be honest. We're just gonna glue this and uh, see where we go. So spread out all that glue. I really like Gorilla Wood glue. It's a very very good glue on the whole. Um, very heavy duty. Get a fantastic bond with it. Um, if I've got time, and it's certainly the thing I use for my phone work, and it's kind of cool. So, yeah, there we go, let's glue all over the whole base. Um, and then, roughly, plonk it onto the bit of hardboard. Room all round, room for my jetties. Squirt any glue there. Cool, now all I need to do is find something to weigh it down. Leave overnight for all the glue to go off. I'll carry on with it tomorrow. Fantastic. In the meantime, I'm going to get on with something else. The thing about this model is the fact that I want it to be a beaver's dam. <coughs> um, I don't know what the temple is going to look like on the top at all yet, but I want it to be a dam. I don't want it to be an island like other bits of this scenery. Beavers, of course, make their dams mostly out of wood. Um, I've had these kicking around for ages. Um, these are little bundles of sticks, straight sticks. That I think came from a lot of cheap shop like Poundland or Pound Stretcher or something like that, or either factory shop. Um, and here I've got some bound willow lawn edge again from a cheaper shop, one meter long, loads of similar length stuff. This is kind of cool because there are lots of different thicknesses. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop rough lengths of this stuff. I think I'm going to cut different sizes. I want to pile it up a little bit, look a bit rounder, but I want to build the whole thing round in wood. Um, and to stick it on, I think I'm going to um, use the filler that I would normally smooth around the bottom. I'm going to stick on the sides as well, and then they'll be able to stick this into the wood. So I'm going to try it out at this end here, see what it looks like, and then work out if I've got enough to go around. Um, so it's kind of cool, so I'm going to cut up different lengths. All I'm literally doing is I'm taking a old pair of Citadel clippers. These ones, the springs neck in it don't work anymore. But they do still cut, and I roughly, I'm just cutting through the stick. And I'm kind of tearing it that way there and getting a rough end, which is kind of cool. I'm only estimating. Roughly the height. Hey, <laughs> ping that bit of there. I think I'll find that in a minute. I'm kind of estimating how tall each bit needs to be. And it's quite good if they come out of different thicknesses because that will make the whole thing that much more interesting and model. I won't look anywhere near as uniform as using balsa wood or coffee stirrers or anything else. So every bit sticking up there, which is kind of neat. I'm getting about four. And a half out of every stick. It's all the spare bits I'm going to keep because they'll get used as firewood and various things in other models. So, so I'm cutting up a bunch of these. Here we go. There's another one. Quick dry and poly filler. I worry about the fact it's not big enough for your badger and it'll be here in a minute. Squish this down around the sides. Gonna get an old piece of hardboard. Spread it on. This, of course, will seal the polystyrene as well, which is quite good. So, when I get to spraying it and painting it, shouldn't matter too much. There we go. 
take a bit of hardboard, scooch it on, a bit of ice in the cake. Fortunately, I've never been asked to ice anybody's cake. Trying to keep it off the hardboard at the minute because obviously I want to build my jetties there. But the water will go up around the bottom of this as well, so it's going to be kind of cool. So, all right. This is completely an experiment. <laughs> All right. So that again without a bit of hobbled in my mouth. This is completely an experiment. I have no idea if this is going to work. Well, let's lay it on. Let's see what happens. Let's stick that on there. I reckon they might need, the logs might need a bit of a seal over the top. Different height, different thicknesses, torn bits and what have you. Going on there. Yeah. Bit thin well, I'm thinking, if this works, I'm going to use this stuff as a metre of it, and it's all attached together. Look. Probably too much. But I'm going to use this inside the wall of the building, cut it off at a certain height, and then that will give me a higher up bit I can raise the temple on and also give enough a roof. Will that work? I don't know. Squish it all together and see what happens. <laughs> this might be brilliant. Uh, it could be again, like everything else, I do a bit of rubbish. I can't imagine lining, lining your lawn with this stuff, it would look crap. But actually, whether I could get away with lining my temple with it. Okay, so this is my halfway stage. Got, well, I haven't quite got an around halfway, but enough there. Stuck with that on. It's going to look quite uniform. Um, but then I've got gaps, which I'm going to end up breaking up smaller pieces and sticking in. Um, uh, I think at the bottom what will happen is that by putting in all the filler, which will then become water around the bottom, filler in the top is going to be just packed mud. I haven't decided what I'm going to do on the inside yet. I might do more pack, just fill it, use filler and just do packed mud or line it all with wood. But I do like the idea of having it slightly raised up so the temple sits kind of this kind of height so the beaver's got enough room to move around underneath and it will give him windows to look out of different sides of his temple, which might be neat. Anyway. I'm also going to cut, I've cut a step in here with a standing after, I don't know if you can see that, which I'm going to finish off with a heat wand, and I'm going to cut a step in here, which can have lower logs and bits going into it, and that will also have a jetty then on there as well. Don't know whether I've knackered the idea of having a jetty at this end, we'll have to see. Anyway, I'm going to leave that to dry overnight now and see how that works out, and if it's good, I'll do the rest of it tomorrow. And this actually might be pretty quick from a build time point of view, which is kind of cool. Glad I found all these sticks, to be honest. Well, at the minute, they're all still squidgy, so I can squidge them around in a blade. Right, leave it. Pick it up in the morning. Right, so this appears to work quite nicely. Nice dried on. Gonna need a bit of some trimming down, so uh, next job then is gonna be to do the rest around here. Um gonna be careful around this bit here. Because uh, 
just under there. And I've been thinking I had this really great idea this morning in the shower. Um, that's why I do some of my best things. Um, I've got um, another one of these bad boys. There we are. Another gloom tide shipwreck. Um, I've already done one as a piece of scenery for B&B. &B. But I thought what might be cool is if I took the front sections. I haven't cut them off yet. If I took the front section of the ship, I might be able to make that into kind of like the um, the pulpit that the priest stands in to pray, to preach through, which would be quite neat. So I'm going to spend a minute or two before I do the rest of this uh, luggage round the outside. And I'm just going to fiddle with this for a few minutes to see what I reckon, whether that will work or not. I reckon that might be really quite cool. And use more of this gloom tied shipwreck um maybe as as part of this model um because i was just i bought this one with the intention just to make another wrecked ship like the one that i've done that uses another piece of scenery in the marsh but actually this will be i can use that phrase this will add a certain level of whimsy and make it a whimsical uh a model a bit more fantasy um and uh that'll be quite neat as well so let's find a pair of clippers and the first thing i'm gonna do is gonna clip some bits off this um, off this model, uh, which is easy said and done. I don't know what I've done with the clippers. Let's clip off some bits and have a look in a minute. Right, so there's this front piece, which is kind of cool. It's got Sigma on the front, I'm gonna, so I'm totally going to have to carve all that bit off. Uh, on the one I've made um, for uh, actual just scenery, check this out. You can see I've put a boar's head on it, and it's now Tautatis, the god of war, but um, in this case, that's no good, but I think if I take that off, I'm going to cut this back to about here, and then I'm going to sink the wreck into the edge of the island here, I think. I might even cut this whole bit out. Sink that back there with logs around it. I'll put a platform up here, so this then becomes the pulpit that the priest stands. And I like, really like the idea of people uh, being on nearby jetties and maybe even on boats and in, uh, on the water when it's time for a service. I think that'll be really cool. And it will add, yeah, that level of whimsy that I'm trying to aim for now with this this terrain, which is kind of neat. So um, I'm going to cut this down first of all and see where we're at. All right, so I've taken this bit and I've cut it down to this kind of size. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to cut out some of the polystyrene. There we go. I'm going to draw this bit in here. I'm going to cut this out so the ship prow then sits in here, and that then becomes part of the temple. I quite like this. It's kind of cool idea. Whimsical. So the water will be flapping around in the bottom of it, which will be quite neat. Um, the deck that actually goes in here is going to be too low, but it's going to be good from a structural point of view. So I'm going to stick it in, and then uh, there'll be a, a higher up platform. That I'll also put in the model uh, to for the priest to stand on, or for figures to stand on, so they can see over the prow nice and neat, which would be pretty neat. So um, I've got my heat rod all warmed up. I'm going to cut that out now. So let's just pop that in there. That's pretty cool. And that's going to sit in there like that. That's nice. I'll have something going across here. Right, so let's see what this is like after I've cut this bit. Uh, here. I'll do again, I'll use the uh, polyfiller mud and or water and get it to hold it all in place kind of cool and I'll have a log pile up behind it holding the uh, you know, still as a part of the um, what's it called? Dam there we go so that all comes out Try to cut a bit of a curve into the polystyrene so it sits and holds it nice. 
Obviously, I'll have to stick it all in place, but we'll see how we go. Turn it off. So that then, the idea is it will sit. Yeah, obviously, got to put another full bag. All right. What do we think? This there then becomes where the priest stands and preaches from. I'm going to have to, that's where I cut off um, the Sigma figure. So I'm going to fill that in with putty um, and maybe you have some plantage or something growing over it a little bit to cover it up. Um, and I'm going to put logs across here so we have a platform for him to stand and preach on. But I think that would be pretty neat. And down in the bottom, let's fill that up with uh, filler. So it's got mud oozing over all that, so it's all part of it, or water lapping in at the base. It's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Okay, so you can see that the filler's in, the boat's in. And now what I'm doing, effectively, is taking lengths of the wood, the logs, cutting it. Different thicknesses of log. The right height to go around the back. And what I've done is I've overlapped it over the um, timbers in the ship as best I can to uh, uh, blend it in, hold it all in place. So it all looks like that it's supposed to be, you know. Um, all part of the integral design of this dam right from the get-go. It's kind of neat. Um, definitely whimsical, not on the fantasy end of things, which is kind of cool. Definitely what I'm aiming for with Ben Fiat. Um, Loondon is very sensible, kind of straight up fantasy, and, and Ben Fiat, although I kind of pressure, feel a bit, bit kind of pressures about Burrows and Badgers. It doesn't have to be wild and wacky, but it is a world that's essentially got. Six foot tall, eight foot tall badgers and six foot tall otters walking around it. So, you know, you might as well have a bit of whimsy. Hey, there goes that word again. We're having a whimsy count, I hope, tonight. I don't know what we're up to. So, okay, so more thickness in there. Putting it in. It's really cool, actually. This is a really, well, I'm saying it's really cool. Hoping it's going to be really effective when I come to kind of painting all this. Um, certainly. Laying all of this into the filler just means that it sits in nice. See that bit's too long. And down the bottom there, that would just be mud or water or whatever else was kind of cool. So, and I'll just cut some short bits now to fill in around the edges. That's kind of neat. I like that a lot. Then obviously I need to do the outside of the uh, uh, ship and finish off doing all the filler around here and here with logs. But, um, yeah, and when it's dry I'll probably put more filler underneath here. Uh, so the, the ship is just raising up out of the mud and the water. But I think that's going to look kind of neat because... I'll use logs this big to, I think, to make a kind of platform across here so my preacher can stand on it, stand and preach at people over the top. I think that's going to look, well, it's going to look one of two things. It's either going to look ridiculously stupid or it's going to look ace. And I tend to find that sometimes with fantasy scenery, there's a very thin line between ridiculously stupid and ace. So what the hell? Um, I like it and I don't care but what is is quite a good use of another one of these shipwrecks rather than just making another shipwreck I've still got all the stern of the shipwreck I can use just for regular stuff as well so. happy days okay, so here we have now I've done all the log work around the ship itself here, down this key side here, I see almost 
So it looks a bit like ramp and steppy up bits. It's kind of cool. I've now put in logs in here because I'm going to put planking in here to make up the pulpit for the priest. Because uh, he will now stand thus preaching to the faithful as they go out to sea, which is kind of cool. I really quite like it. Um, I'm going to sand inside here the floor. Uh, I'm not really sure um, what I'm going to do on the inside here. Some ways I'm tempted to put more logs in it, but the problem with that is I'll start to lose width. So I probably might just sand the inside of this one. I'm going to sand over all of the top of this. I think I'm going to use uh, some Mod Podge to seal all this polystyrene and help seal some of the logs in place. Um, sand everything. And then I've got to come up with a, a roof for the dam and maybe a roof for the temple itself. But um, yeah, we're coming on. Make it up as I go along, but it's it's getting there. Much more progress this evening. Uh, it's halted because I have completely run out of ready mixed polyfiller, which is a bind. I'm going to have to go and buy some more tomorrow. God damn it. So I can't do the water around the edges. Well, if I can't do the water around the edges down here, I can't build up the jetty that I want to put on there or on the other side. But nevertheless, we are still making progress looking good well I'm not sure if I've ever done this before on a and b build because um, well this is where we're at I'm kind of happy with it so far I mean I've got look here's the the temple right and the dam and, and that's going to be the beaten side I've got to build a roof on that and and here's the priest and he stood on the front and he can do the preaching thing there. But I was thinking about what I want this model to be and I've kind of decided that what it needs to be, apart from a dam, is I kind of like, like the idea of it being a kind of pirate coast kind of thing. So not only is it a dam, but it's kind of like the Ben Fliot ship junk pile. All bits of stuff on it. Broken mast and, and steering wheels and bits of boat and that kind of thing. Which means... I think probably for the first time on a Burrows and Badgers build, I'm going to have to go digging through the CAC. Yes, I am. Digging through the CAC. I don't know which CAC boxes I'm going to be looking in, but I'm going to be looking for bits of mass, bits of rudder, that kind of thing, so I can pile out because it all at the moment looks way too neat and tidy, and I want it to be a bit more haphazard, a bit more whimsical than it actually is. So... Um, I'm going to have to do some spares boxes. Cack boxes? I don't even know where they are in the new workshop. Okay, uh, bear with me, people. Let's see what we can find. Okay, then. So here is the uh, uh, results of digging through the cack. Burrows and Badgers Ship Edition. Um, and as we can see, there's quite a lot here. Look, um, there's... Uh, um, actually, that's from the Gloom Tide Shipwreck, but that's definitely going to get used more. Uh, there's kind of like cannons. Um, this cannon... Actually, I seem to remember it was made by the very venerable gentleman whose name is Chris Bone uh, from many, many years ago uh, at Workshop. Uh, Chris, if you're watching this, I owe this to you. Um, there are Playmobil steering wheels. There are bits of fishing net. There are entire rowing boats. There's uh, bits of plank. There's another rowing boat. There's a different cannon from a different game system. There are bits of rigging, broken masts. Um, and there's even various bits of kind of like different shaped wood because everything looks far too neat and organised and more like a great big pyre to burn um, witches on. Witches if you're kind of like on the continent or somewhere else. Not in England because we didn't burn witches, but, you know, sorry, little historical note, nerd. Um, but, um, yeah, so that is the results of, of digging through the cack this time round. Oh, look, there's a little hook there. That's the shippy bit. And, uh, yeah, there's loads, loads of stuff. Um, I've definitely, definitely got to be able to do bits with some of this. <laughs> Digging through the cack has been quite successful, hoping that we should be able to come up with something pretty good. However, um, oh look, there's a, another bit, old door. Yeah, that's a lot of cack. Lots of cack. Lots of cack from digging through the cack. Um, um, these are on the uh, uh, worktop 
on my be workbench. These are not CAC. I'm using the uh, uh, workshop trees as marshy trees because I think they'll work real cool because of the raised up kind of roots and stuff. And all the water flushes on them. Any anyway, that's not digging through the CAC. So, um, yeah, that's digging through the CAC. Uh, Burrows and Badger Ship Edition. That's quite a substantial pile of CAC. Uh -huh. Now, all I've got to do is work out what I'm going to do with it. How I'm going to make the dam less neat and tidy. How I'm going to pile it all up and make this kind of like pirate's cove shipwreck shippy junk pile kind of temple kind of thing. Um, when I was piling up all this junk, uh, the result of my first CAC dive, uh, my first CAC dig um, in a Burrows and Badgers video, I think, I think this is my first digging through the CAC for a Burrows and Badgers video. Uh, old school watchers of this channel, if you've watched a lot of my Burrows and Badgers videos and you can recall me digging through the CAC uh, on another Burrows and Badgers video, please leave a comment down below, that would be really helpful because frankly I can't be asked to look through the entire back catalogue to see if this is generally the first time I have gone digging through the CAC um, for B&B, but whilst I was piling up my pile of CAC, another thought struck me. Not only was this the first digging through the CAC for B&B that I can remember, this is also going to be the first time I have a proper cliffhanger. Yes, a doof 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 a moment, you know. Um, international viewers, viewers from across the pond, if you have no idea what the Brits are talking about when we talk about the doof doof doofers, Google EastEnders, doof doof doofer. I don't know how to spell doof doof doofer by the way, but it's that, oh, never mind. Anyway, um, I'm not going to work this out in this video. You're not going to get to see what happens to the pile of khaki in this video. You're going to get to see that at the start of the next video. This is the end of this particular video. I'm not going any further than my pile of cack. Sorry, but um, I'm kind of there with that. Now, that means that we're going to have to have a second video pretty quickly, and not to worry, that is going to happen because I want to get this model on the table. I'm really, really close to getting all of my Benfliot stuff out uh, and putting out one big table, hopefully eight foot by four foot, because um, I want to be using it in my upcoming campaign with my gaming group. So uh, I need to get it finished, but we ain't going to see it in this video. There's still quite a bit to do. I've got to add water around the outside, I've got to add um, jetties at probably two ends, got to add the junk and I've got to build up the temple top as well and work out if there's going to be any details inside the kind of the badge, the, the beavers kind of like little kind of quarters underneath the temple and paint the whole thing. So a lot to come in video part two but for right now the uh, badger dam temple Benfliot build for burrows and badgers and beavers and barks it's finished. This is the end of part one. Come back and see me in part two. If you've enjoyed this video, please uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think what I could be doing and how you think you ought to add the khaki if it was going to be you. If um, you haven't liked this video, hey, well, you know, what could I say? You know, uh, I don't even see him now, you know, so yeah, feel free to comment anyway. If you are not one of my regular viewers, then please do make sure after you've hit like, you hit subscribe. And uh, um, make sure you come back and see part two of this video. And if you would like to support my channel, even more so than doing all that stuff to help the great YouTube algorithm, you could also consider joining my Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash Worlds. Goes the other way. Patreon.com slash Worlds. Um, that's a really cool thing to do, that helps me out and helps come up supply various bits of CAC and other bits and pieces to go into these models. So, thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you have enjoyed it and found it useful, um, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Magrathea, a builder of worlds. Let's get back to the CAC. <laughs>